hi guys welcome back to another video on angular 17 this video is very important because i'm going to be talking about components components are the building blocks for creating a single page web applications before talking about components communication let me explain you in simpler word that what are components so if i talk about a simple example let's say the angular website a uh, component actually is a single UI building block. So for example, on the left side, you can see that there is a sidebar and the Angular developers who have built this website might have created several components for building this whole layout. They might have created one component for showing the Angular logo on the top left corner. They might have created a separate component for creating this particular dropdown. They might have created a separate component for this particular search bar they might have created separate component for each of these item which we can click on okay and the reason we create a uh, components for each of these things is that that each file of the component should not get large and uh, as soon as the files are getting large it is very difficult to maintain and understand the code that is written within a single file all right so for that reason we create multiple components and later on we combine those components all together to show that uh, in our website on our web page so here uh, they might have created separate component for the footer and the footer might have further nested components uh, to show each of these button it's up to us it's just that whenever the component is getting larger it's always a best practice to create a component and one way to create a component and one important part of that is to communicate uh, between multiple components. So let's say that this is the search component and whenever I search something over here, this is another component and the list that is going to be shown up after searching and the list rendered is a part of another component. So passing data from this search component to another component which is responsible for showing all the results uh, then we have to manage the communication between this search component and the list component all together so there are multiple ways for communicating these components in angular so i'm going to show you a simpler way how we can create a component and simpler way a shortest way to communicate between each other uh, there are uh, multiple advanced ways for components communication like the state management system like redux uh, i've already created a video on that uh, using angular 16 that can work in angular 17 as well you can check that out and learn redux that is a very long video and this that is a quite complex topic to understand when we have hundreds of components then we need to know how to write redux code for components communication and after that we can use rxjx subjects to for components communication that is also a very important topic i've created the video on that as well but in this particular series i will be talking about rxjx as well for the components communication and other stuff as well so for now i've created this empty angular 17 project and it contains nothing as always a uh, component is empty html is empty and uh, it's showing the empty page all right so let's first create a new component all right so now i'm gonna create a new component with the angular cli command line in my terminal i'm in my project directory in my terminal so i'll be writing ng space g for generate and then component uh, i will be creating a new folder so for creating a new folder i can name the folder i'm gonna name the components slash and then i can give it any name for that component let's say a task this is the name of the component i'll hit enter and it's going to create a new folder because i asked it to create a new folder and inside it it has created all of the four files which are required for a particular component if you see the app component which was by default created that app component was also having these four files like the typescript file spec file scss file and html file and task component is also having these four files now in order to use this particular component let's say this task component have some kind of ui okay but uh, uh, if i try to run my project you will see that this project is going to run this app component html file over here and if i refresh this page you will see that it is not showing anything so uh, although this particular html is empty but the task html file is not empty 
and the reason this is not being shown up because we are rendering the app component this app component is by default rendered at the home route of the page i'll talk about routing as well in upcoming videos so now in order to show let's say this task component we intend to show that particular component on the left sidebar or maybe in the footer or maybe in the center of the page maybe in the header so let's load that task component in our app component at the home route okay so in order to use that i need to fetch that task component so let's import that over here all right so i have imported that uh, here now i can use that component as a child component for the parent route now the app component has become a parent component for the ch child task component because the task is being used by the app component okay so here in my app component html since this is empty i can simply use this particular selector to show the whole html which is the part of the task component so i can write the app and then the task now if i save it you will see that all of the html which is written within the task component is being printed because i am loading up so i can create as much components as i want and i can load all of those components one by one step by step over here and those components can combine make my whole website like maybe the dozens of components i can load up in any particular route all right so this is how we can create a component and load a component within the parent component and then show the content now let's talk about how we can pass the data from one component to another component it can be from the parent to child and from child to parent so let's come to this app.component.ts file and here in this component i'll first define some kind of data that i can pass to child task component so here let's say i'm going to define an array of strings so string array equals to and let's give it task one task two so these are the couple of uh, tasks which i have added let me add a third one as well okay so now let's pass this data to a child component and show this data not in the this particular component in this html but pass this data to the child component and child component should res be responsible for loading this particular task list but i want to pass the task one task two task three one by one means that i want to load the child component three times based upon uh, how many values inside it because the task is responsible for showing only one value of this particular array okay this is what i think should be added although i can pass the whole array to the child component uh, but uh, i want to show you how we can render the child component multiple times so here in this html i'm going to first wrap everything within this div let's say and let's add an h1 as well so task list and now let's use the new way of iterating through the elements in angular so let's use this add sign for and now task of task this is the variable name and let's track this out this is to avoid some kind of weird error that it shows and now let's cut this from here and paste it over here now this component is going to be rendered three times okay let me see uh yes you can see that uh this is now rendering three times because there are three values inside this array uh this one all right so now uh rather than showing this tasks work in our task html let's pass the values to that child component from here in this app component html so in order to pass the value first of all this value exists inside this task because this loop works is that uh, this task array is going to be uh, push uh, putting the value in this task variable we can write anything over here uh, it's just the variable name created for each value one by one okay so inside this component in order to pass the value we can use this square bracket and then we can use the variable uh, to pass that value okay so this particular task is referring 
to a variable that I yet need to create. This is going to be a part of child component and this task is referring to this task. Okay, uh, let me change it to VL so do, you don't get confused. This VL is yet need to be created and this is going to be part of the child component. So let's come over here, task component and uh, here uh, what i can do is i can use a decorator which is called input this is responsible for receiving the value from a parent component so input and here i can use val this is going to be the same uh, variable uh, which i have uh, passed now you can see error is gone as well and this is referring to this one all right now this variable have received the value from that parent component now let's use this val to show it over here so let's use val and now let's see if it is printing uh, yes you can see that task one task two task three and the values from the parent components have been successfully passed uh, from parent to the child component now let's communicate from child to parent component let's say that uh, a child component uh, have a button after each of this task uh, and there is a button called delete and if I click on any of the delete since delete button is going to be a part of the child component over here but the values are being stored in the parent component so child component should inform the parent component that you should delete this particular task so this is going to be a communication from the child to parent component reverse order Alright, so let's come over here and in order to pass the data from the child to parent component, we need to use output decorator from angular core. So output uh, task deleted is going to be the variable name. We can write anything event emitter as well and event emitter should be also from angular core that has to be added and this is of type void. Alright, and now for this particular output i'm going to add on delete click this dot task deleted and the emit all right so now the child component is going to trigger this function and this function is going to use this particular variable to inform the parent component so let's come to this child component and here i can write button click equals to on delete click and then the delete all right so now uh, we need to inform the parent component that uh, which variable should receive the value from the child component so we need to use this variable and bind this variable wherever we are calling this child component from the parent component so here this is where we are calling the child component so now i can use these parentheses and paste that same variable for the event emitter all right and then the same variable is going to call some kind of let's say delete task and then passing the particular task all right so now this delete task uh, is should be a part of so let me explain you again one thing so you don't get confused uh, this particular on delete click is only exist in this child component and this is to only trigger that uh, we need to delete this particular task which is currently active over here and this is existing in the child component and when this is going to get clicked the parent component is going to get uh, receive uh, a response over here and then we have to manage from the parent component that okay child component want us to delete that particular task now let's delete that task now we need to move ahead and delete a particular task and for that reason i'm going to create a new function within the parent component so i'm going to create this particular function in my parent component so below that i can have delete task and i can receive a task of type string since this is a string and this is going to be the tasks filter and i think this is giving me correct uh code all right so let me save it now let's see and let's refresh and now let's see if i click on the delete uh if 
uh, this deletion delete this task to or not from the parent uh, component or not so click on delete and now you can see that it is working perfectly fine and we have learned how we can create components how we can communicate between multiple components i'll coming back to the components communication through multiple ways through rxjs through redux and there are more uh, state management libraries out there and i've already created a video about signals as well signals are also used to uh, communicate between multiple components as well if you haven't seen the signals video do watch that out i've already created that in one of my previous videos so thank you so much for watching guys i hope that you have liked it do subscribe my channel and like my video so see you guys in the next video thank you so much